Hi everyone, I am Brandon Allinger from Prop Store, and I'm here today to show you some great Gremlins pieces from our upcoming entertainment memorabilia live auction. You can see here with me are some puppets from the film. These are all from the sequel from Gremlins 2, and I have both some uh, full-size puppets that were made by Rick Baker's Cinovation Studios and some small-scale stop-motion puppets that were made by Doug Beswick, uh, who's a well-known stop-motion and creature effects artist. So I'd like to just take you through these pieces and give you a little bit of a, a detail on each one. It's, it's interesting that some of these were done by Rick Baker and some were done by Doug Beswick because those two guys are old friends, uh, guys who kind of grew up together, worked on early John Landis films and did things like the Octoman and Schlock together. And of course, Star Wars, they both worked on the Cantina sequence, later wound up working on Gremlins 2 in slightly different capacities. Um, Rick's crew, of course, Rick Baker's crew was in charge of all the Mogwai and the primary Gremlins puppets. And then Doug Beswick did these specialty creations, the, the stop motion pieces with their armatures. So, I will start by talking about uh, Gizmo. This is obviously one of the star lots in the auction. This is actually on the auction catalog cover. If you don't have a catalog yet, you can get one at PropStore.com. Uh, and this is a hero Gizmo puppet. You can see it's connected to a servo pack down at the bottom. And basically there's a series of cables that run up through the puppet's feet and connect in various places to mechanisms inside the face, the head, the ears, probably the hands and they drive the whole thing. So you would have had puppeteers off camera with radio control units that are connected to these servos. The servos are, are moving the wires in and out, the cables, which are actuating the mechanisms that brings this guy to life. Um, one of the really interesting things about the Gizmo puppets is they built them with replacement faces, meaning the face is held on just by a couple of snaps and that face would remove from the skull. And when it's taken off, uh, you could change it for a face with a different expression. So this face is sort of a neutral face. There were some that were happy faces, there were sad faces, there were a wide variety of expressions. And in the past we have handled some of the, just those uh, gizmo replacement faces. But this is a complete intact hero puppet. I first saw this 12 or 15 years ago at Rick Baker's shop and it was in its original storage box where it had been since the end of production. Uh, I think this film came out in 1989, so over 30 years ago. So the puppet is designed to work with the series of servos and cables that are connected to all the mechanisms inside the body, the hands, and the face. And there would be a puppeteer offset who's controlling the servos with a radio control unit. They'd probably have a video monitor set up to watch the character. There's small plates, metal plates, that are mounted in the bottom of its feet, so it could be positioned somewhere on set. And, you know, this is a hero puppet with a large degree of functionality to it. I mean, you can see there must be 20, 25 different cables going to it, each driving some different part of the mechanism. And, you know, one of the things that's amazing to me about a piece like this is the condition that it's in. I mean, it literally looks like it just came off the set. I know that this piece has had minor sealing work done to it by the crew at Tom Spina Designs, but I think little to no restoration, meaning all the foam latex parts were fully intact, which is fantastic for a piece of this age. And it's because it was well stored by Rick Baker after production. They had them in these uh, dedicated bespoke storage boxes that were made specifically for all the Mogwai puppets. Um, and of course they had a number of different style of Mogwai puppets in the film. So in addition to the cable mechanisms that are going up to the interior of the puppet's body, you've also got these rod controls that you can see down here at the bottom. And this is all custom made by the Cinovation team. You see the sort of pistol grip style control on, on this side with the trigger to it that would activate something. I'm not sure exactly what that did. Uh, maybe a mouth movement, maybe something with one of the hands. Uh, but they do have these two hand controls underneath the puppet that would work in conjunction with the radio control. So it really takes a team of people to bring a character like this to life. And we know from behind the scenes photos and just from seeing other pieces out there in, in, uh, in collections that they had a number of different styles of puppets for the film. So, you know, this is one that's designed to be specifically mounted from underneath to a set, mounted through those plates I was talking about on its feet and controlled by radio control. This Hero Gizmo is absolutely one of the star pieces in the sale, one of my personal favorite pieces. It is lot number 47, and the pre-sale auction estimate on it is $80,000 to $120,000. So in addition to the radio control puppets, like the Gizmo we just looked at, they also had some marionette puppets on Gremlins 2. And this is, of course, a very simple, sort of old-school style of puppeteering. There's no mechanisms in this piece at all. It's just hung on 
thin cables, fishing line essentially, with a very simple hand control at the top of it. And a puppeteer would sit just out of frame and work this thing. And of course the cables would disappear, or the wires disappear on film, and they could bring it to life, maybe make it bounce through a scene or walk along the floor. You know, they, they were experimenting with all different types of gags or trick shots on Gremlins 2. And some of them very high tech, like the cable puppet that we just looked at, the gizmo. Some of them very low tech, like the, like the Daffy puppet. Visually, the, the character himself, Daffy, he's, he's very similar to what a radio controlled Daffy would look like. Uh, it's foam latex for the face, the ears, the hands, and the feet. The body is, I believe, cast foam that's then covered in fur. Uh, the eyes are acrylic. There's small eyelids on it, so there's a ton of detail. He even has some resin teeth and a little resin mouth in there. Um, and the detail of these guys is phenomenal because this is only you know 10 or 12 inches high, but you can see in the paintwork especially, there's, there's veins on the foam latex ears. The nails have been finished and grimed up to, to look real. And of course, that's part of you know bringing these things to life is the details and making sure that even when they're shot in close up, they do hold up on film. Um, so these two together really shows you part of the creative process and how they had to go about bringing these characters to life in Gremlins 2. Uh, they are two separate lots. Daffy is lot number 49 with a presale estimate of $40,000 to $60,000. And I'm going to move on from the Rick Baker puppets and talk about some of the small scale stop motion miniatures. So we do have two different stop motion Gremlin puppets in the auction. We have the bat gremlin that's here on the table in front of me, and also the spider gremlin. And of course, these are new gremlin characters that were created specifically for the sequel. They weren't in the original movie. Uh, they're some of the stars of the film. They get more screen time than a lot of the other gremlins. And these are just wonderful little puppets that, as I say, were built by Doug Beswick, who's a very well-known stop-motion artist. And this guy has got a full stop-motion armature in here. So uh, it's a, probably a ball and socket armature within the main body. And then I can see out here on the wings, it's a wire armature. There's a little bit of it here that's exposed where the foam latex is broken down just a bit. And I know from chatting with Doug Beswick about it, the wings themselves are made out of a fabric material that was coated in foam latex. So they had to do something to give it just enough uh, strength that they could manipulate it and film with it, but at the same time sort of make it look like skin of, of a bat. And I think that was very successful. You know, one of the things that I love about this little puppet is the paintwork. You know, it's, it's a relatively small piece, the size of it. It's probably about 18 or 20 inches wide, but the amount of detail in the airbrush work on the skin, uh, the face, the wings themselves is just fantastic. And this one's held up pretty well. There was a small amount of restoration work that was done to it by the team at Tom Speed Designs, mostly sealing, just sealing some of the open foam latex areas. There are places on the back of the puppet where I can see through the body. They basically will cut small slits in it so that if they need to go in and adjust the stop motion armature, tighten up the joints, they have access to those little Allen head screws and such. Um, and this plays in the film specifically. There's a shot where uh, he's on a counter surface and he basically leaps up and takes flight and of course when he takes flight the wings start flapping and that is the stop motion puppet when you watch the film it's very obvious that it is a stop motion puppet it's a very harry housen effect it, it it looks very harry housen but it fits within that world of gremlins and then of course there was also a full-size version of the bat gremlin and we do have one of those in the auction the full-size puppet i don't have it here with me in this display environment right now to show you guys, but it is there in the auction catalog if you take a look at it. it it's in scale with the Mogwai, so it's much larger, and it was used for shots where the background was interacting with performers on camera. So this one for the flying shots, uh, and specifically where he takes off for the first time, and then go to a full-size version where it's actually attacking the actors, if that makes sense. The stop motion bat gremlin is lot number 153 in the auction, and it has a presale estimate of $15,000 to $20,000. And in addition to the bat gremlin, as I say, we also have the stop motion spider puppet. Both these, by the way, are one offs, I believe. Uh, they're the only examples that were made for the film, and you can actually screen match both of them. Um, the paintwork on the bat gremlin and the paintwork on the spider gremlin as well. The spider gremlin also has a slightly different shape to the main body. Uh, the spider gremlin, much like the bat, it was only used in a couple of shots in the film. Uh, there's a shot where the spider gremlin's in a dark hallway and it's walking around and it's very clearly, again, the stop motion puppet. It's got that Harry Harryhausen vibe to the shot. Um, just like the bat, they did a full size version of this as well. We actually sold one of those in auction a couple of years ago. It was huge. It was probably six or eight feet across and it was a rod puppet. So they had 
rods connected to each of the spider legs and they had a team of people that were walking it through the shot. We can see the armature of the stop motion spider gremlin and we can see it exposed in just a few places on the joints of the legs here. So it has a full armature through each of the legs and then up through the body and likely in the arms as well, possibly in the head, uh, so that it can be puppeteered for that shot. And if you go and take a look at the film, you'll be able to, to spot it in that dark hallway that I'm talking about. The paintwork on both of these stop motion puppets, I believe was done by some of the same artists who worked at Rick Baker's studio on their full size counterparts. And it has that classic Gremlins aesthetic, the sort of reptilian skin with the very detailed airbrush work. And especially because these are small scale puppets, the detail is especially tight. You can use the paintwork when you look at the, the film to match up, I know the spider gremlin, for example, uh, the ears are painted in a slightly different manner to the full-size counterpart, and it helps you pick the puppet out on screen. Um, again, one of the things I love about these guys is just the scale. You know, they're, they're the perfect scale to put in your home office or home theater. They're, they're really quite manageable. Obviously, the foam latex itself is always a delicate material, but these have been taken care of. They've held up really well. Uh, both of them have been sealed, and if they're well looked after for the future, they should be around for many years to come. So the Spider Gremlin is lot number 152 in the auction, and the pre-sale estimate on that is twenty to $30,000. Uh, and I believe that covers us for the puppets, so I'm going to pivot slightly in category and talk about a piece of artwork. The original airbrush painting by master poster artist John Alvin, who's one of the most recognized poster artists of the 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond. Uh, and this is for the first Gremlins film. So all the puppets that we looked at were from the sequel, Gremlins 2. But the artwork here is actually from Gremlins number 1. It's a great, very simple, subtle poster. Of course, you just have the reveal of Gizmo, the Mogwai character, which nobody had seen at that time. It was new to the world. So they just have his little furry hands and a pair of eyeballs in there that's peeking out. And of course, the studio art department dropped the title and the credits and such over top of it later. Uh, but this is the original illustration artwork for that final one sheet. It's primarily airbrush on board. And you can see in the shot with me here, it's a really sizable piece. I was actually struck by how large it was when I first saw it in person. Just a gorgeous piece of John Alvin artwork. And that one is in the auction with a pre-sale estimate of 50 to $70,000. A lot of times when artists do poster illustrations like this, they will hide something in it. Sometimes it's their name, the first letter of their last name. Sometimes it's their kids' names. I was just taking a look at this uh, poster before we started the video here. I picked up on something for the first time. When I look at the button of the jeans and the artwork here, and you look very closely, it's actually labeled Amblin, which of course is Steven Spielberg's production company that produced Gremlins. And it has the little Amblin logo, which of course is Elliot and E.T. on the bicycle, very familiar silhouette. So we'll get a close up of that. You guys can take a look. It's a fun little Easter egg that's living within this artwork as poster artists love to do. These Gremlins pieces, as well as a number of others that we haven't covered here today, are part of our upcoming entertainment memorabilia live auction. And that runs from June 21st to 24th, this year, 2022, uh, right here at our facility in Valencia. Of course, you can bid in person, online, or via telephone. All the details are at propstore.com.